There's an asteroid in our solar system, big enough to wipe out a city, and nobody knows where it is. We spotted it in 2007, and then we lost track of it. Did somebody zap it with a digitizing laser and send it into the world of Clash of Clans? Probably not, though I did, weirdly enough, star in a very short film in which that occurred which was a sponsorship for Clash of Clans. This video is actually is not technically a sponsorship for Clash of Clans. They did not ask me to do this. But I absolutely uh, am happy to disclose that I, I did star in a short film by the people at Clash of Clans. Can't make a billion tons of rock just disappear. We sent it into the Clash of Clans world. It, it fell there. But then me and my co-star, we f forged a meteorite hammer that allows the citizens of the Clash world to build back stronger and better. Anyway, this is based, kind of, this is kind of based on a real thing that happened in March of 2007. Some astronomers spotted a thing that was moving through our solar system, and it was later named 2007 FT3. For about a day and a half, telescopes tracked it as it moved across the sky, and like our first glimpse of it was like, well, this puts it on a track that like it, we should follow up with this asteroid to make sure that it isn't in a trajectory to hit Earth, but then we never found it again. <laughs> Um, so here's the situation. When astronomers discover a new asteroid, they use those first few sightings to calculate an orbit. And that's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be something. You know, you get your speed, your direction. You think about how gravity is going to tug on into the future. And the more nights you watch it, the more accurate those predictions get. But if you only have like 1.2 days of data, uh, you can't do much more than guess. So like the pitcher is pitching at you and then you close your eyes right after it leaves the pitcher's hand. You're not going to know where to swing. And in the case of 2007 FT3, that uncertainty just blew up. Like, it became so hard to figure out where it might be that there was no way of spotting it again. It's somewhere out there on a long looping path around the sun that we're not gonna, like, find it by looking. We're might find it just because we find lots of asteroids, but we're not going to find it by looking for it. The cone is too big. So the cone is like where it was, spreads out into a cone, and that cone is so big we can't like look around inside of it anymore to try and find it. But astronomers kept it on the books. We It's still got its name, and they've, they've built lots of different mathematical versions of its orbit. I mean like thousands of them. These are called virtual impactors, and they represent like every plausible trajectory based on those early observations. And a small handful of those thousands of trajectories do happen to cross paths with Earth. So this means, technically speaking, there are versions of 2007 FT3 that might exist, but probably don't, that could hit us someday. Which is why, every so often, you will see headlines like NASA warns of lost asteroid that could strike Earth in 2024. And that sounds very scary. Lost asteroid? But look, there's a very high chance that if it was actually headed our way, we would have spotted it with several of the whole sky surveys that we're doing now, specifically to spot asteroids. NASA has something called the Century Risk Table, which keeps track of all potential impactors. And the odds for this one is tiny, like one in a million chance. For most of its possible orbits, the asteroid misses Earth by millions of kilometers. But since we have not seen it since 2007, we cannot erase the chance, this slim mathematical possibility that it would hit Earth, which is kind of fascinating. Now, it did not disappear appear. It was still there. We just didn't look at, like, we had some days of data, and then we tried to pick it up. And so it is not likely that it was shot with a digitizing space laser and sent to, into the world of Clash of Clans. But possible? It is just an asteroid that slipped through the observational net. And I am honestly a little surprised that we haven't found it yet. From, but from what I can tell, like, well, I would think, well, maybe we've spotted it again, we just gave it a different name. But apparently not. Apparently we would know if we picked it up again. I think what would happen is that initially we'd give it a new designation, and then we'd track it for a while, and then and we'd do its orbit, and I'm very impressed by this, but all the computers that, would, that do this would trace its orbit backward and be like, ah, that's actually not 2025 XWB, that's 2007 FT3. So when they look at these asteroids, they make the orbits go backward and forward in time. And when they get more and more data, which, which we're able to do now, more effectively, apparently they can do that, which is amazing. Why didn't we just keep tracking the asteroid? Why, like, why did we look away? And here's the thing, I don't think we actually did look away. I think what happened is that it was going too close to the moon for the telescopes of the time to be able to see it. So the moon was washing out that part of the sky, and by the time the conditions were good again for the asteroid to be visible, it was too faint and too far gone to find. So we did not lose it because we weren't looking, we lost it because of the circumstances. Sorry.
about the circumstances. Now, today our systems are much better. We have PanStars, we have Atlas. Soon we're gonna have the Vera Rubin Observatory in Chile, which is extra exciting. I mean, basically we already do. Like Vera Rubin is operational, it's just not, I think it's like still in like a testing phase. And those telescopes together will every few nights sweep the entire sky. And so today, a 400 meter asteroid, which is the size of FT3, that would almost certainly stay on our radar and we'd be able to track it and figure out what's up with it. And then your other question about FT3 probably would be what would happen if it hit us? And first, I'm confident to say that it will not. But second, it would release something in the thousands of megatons range, which would definitely not wipe out humanity or life on Earth or anything. This is a big rock, and it's big enough that if it hit in the wrong spot, it could be really bad. Like if it happened to hit right on top of a city, like an urban area, that would be very bad. Now, most of the Earth is not cities. Most of the Earth is empty open ocean, so that's good. But if it hit over the land, that would be bad. If it hit over a city, that would be very, very bad. So yes, ultimately, we would prefer to know where it is. So if there was a guy who back in 2007 sent it to the Clash of Clans universe, he should say something about that. And he's not. For me, though, this really isn't about the danger. I'm not worried about FT3 hitting us. It's about, like, how the systems work. It is a big solar system. There is a lot of space and there are a lot of rocks and those rocks are very small and very spread out compared to all of the rest of everything. And the extent to which we now have systems for actually dealing with this is just very cool that we had tools back then that were good enough to catch something. And now we have these tools that are so much better. And for the first time in human history, like we know pretty much that there's no like huge space rock that's going to hit us. The solar system is up to its own business and and things do not stop moving, but we know an amazing amount and have done an amazing amount of work to track all of these rocks up there. Uh, maybe inspired by that spate of movies about asteroids hitting the Earth that happened back in the day. But wow, I'm impressed by us. This is one way in which I am like legitimately impressed by humans. We are have gotten quite good at tracking the rocks, but this is one that is currently missing. I can't wait to tell you when we find it.